one at that particular time. As you, you used the word legend just a moment ago, and uh, so a, a legend was created, an icon was built, and I, like you, I feel very sad about the boys at the time. I think it probably was a mistake to want them to walk behind the coffin. They should have been probably slipped in the cathedral, the abbey, uh, by a side door. But as you look back now, the the boys must have so many different emotions of that day. I have many. I'm sure you do. Can you share a couple with us, Lord Carey? Yeah, I mean, um, first of all, the populist uh, service, as it was, I think the dean of the Cathedral Wesley Carr did a fantastic job, wonderful choir, uh, Elton John, all that. And when, uh, as I was in the cathedral, in the abbey, I was conscious of the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people outside, because you could hear them, in the, we could hear the cheering, the clapping. Um, I, I think the, I remember John Humphreys saying to me on, on the radio when I did a program that week, is this a start of a, a national spiritual revival? And I responded, I, I wish it were the case, uh, John, but uh, frankly, I think it is genuine uh, mourning for a wonderful young princess, two little boys, and that very genuine sense of grief was going on. Um, I'm sure you agree. I don't know yes. how old you were. Um, and I would have been sort of mid, yeah, mid, yeah, mid thirties. Yes, that's yeah. what I would have been. Yeah. So, so there we are. So we, remember, live We do. So it wasn't the start of that, but was it the end of what was known as the stiff British? If indeed you, you might argue they never even actually existed, but the idea of the stiff uh, upper lip uh, among the Brits, and that, that we were suddenly able to emote, yeah. we threw flowers at the passing car, uh, the yeah. passing cortege. Okay. I think so. I think so. I think one of the things that um, uh, Princess Diana did genuinely, she touched the people in a way that the royal family were not able to do before. I mean, I think the Queen Mother had that kind of populist common touch. But Diana expressed this in a very real way, a genuine way, a touch of them. those suffering from AIDS and the AIDS. Um, those um, that are concerned for landmines, I mean, there was a sort of, she touched people's imagination. They felt that she was approachable. And I think the two boys, her boys, carry on that legacy. They, they have also got it, I think. And that's a wonderful thing, really. So people were actually genuinely mourning that. And so an icon was born that we are inheriting it today, I, I think. The people's princess, I mean, what Tony Blair said. Yes, and that now it is possibly more acceptable to emote, to cry at a funeral, to cry at yes, badges, which, which has to be a healthy thing, last we look at. I think it is a healthy thing. I think we should. And that's why um, I always said to people, let your emotions run, because if you don't grieve now, you're going to be grieving uh, a little way down the road. Actually, my wife and I went with some colleagues the evening before the service. We w walked out among the thousands of people outside the Abbey, along Downing Street, and so on, talking to people. And people were saying to me and to my wife, well, we never genuinely really were able to grieve for my mother. And so there was a sense in which it was vicarious in a way. Gosh, good Lord. Uh, Lord Carey, thank you. Pleasure speaking with you, sir. Uh, formerly George Carey, then Archbishop of Canterbury, and Lord Carey, who led the prayers, of course, for Diana in that funeral service that he said was held by the Archdeacon there. Uh, 826. More of that coverage in a moment. Two other matters. Mrs. May deciding that she now will seek to take the Conservatives into the next general election. Mike in Gosport. Well, we can all dream dreams, Mike, can't we? Morning. Well, call me an old Tory cynic, but I... I oh, I'll do it another way. Old Tory cynic in Gosport. You're on the radio. Good morning. This, this will never happen. Uh -huh. She had no choice. She had to say it. If she hadn't said it, she would turn not only from a lame duck, but she'd be a legless or a dead duck. Mm. She's learned from political history that the worst thing a prime minister can do is pre-announce their, their departure. Yes. It started the Blair and Brown wars when Blair told Brown he would go after 10 years. Yes. Uh, Cameron made the same mistake by saying he wasn't going to stand for the following election. But it's the stuff of dreams, Mike, isn't it? It's like me saying I'm going to date Charlize Theron. It's never going to, well, it's never going to happen. Yes, but look at the alternative. If she, if, she, if she allowed the speculation to build that she was going in a couple of years, 